everyone. My name is Dr. Juwan. I'm a chiropractic neurologist over in Carroll Street, Illinois. I do have a private practice. I've been practicing for 13 years. And what I'm going to talk about today, I'm going to talk about maybe some of you have it or maybe somebody that you know has it and it's a condition called restless leg syndrome. Now what is restless leg syndrome? Most of you or people that you know will complain of why will my legs stop twitching, crawling, burning, tingling, and also sometimes feels it feels like they have spiders rubbing down their legs. And it's typically at night. So who am I? I have a lot of initials after my name. I have a private practice in located in Carroll Stream, Illinois. I've been in practice for 13 years. Um, I'm also, too, an adjunct professor over at the College of DuPage. I teach human anatomy and physiology to all the new up-and-comers. Um, it is a lot of fun. They keep me young. I do have a web page, uh, www.totalhealthdupage.com. Total Health and Wellness, that was my own site. Now it's totalhealthdupage.com. Uh, phone number is 630-653-2225. And if you see me on Facebook, I like to have a lot of friends on Facebook. I want to be the most popular guy on Facebook. So if you can, please like me. And if you see the videos that you like, please share it with a friend or share it with your friend, with a family member. So what is restless leg syndrome? Okay, now a lot of you may be experiencing it in some time of your life or what's going to happen like you know that somebody who has it. It is a sensor, sensory motor movement disorder. What does that mean? A sensory motor movement disorder it means that the senses in your legs do not shut down. It's characterized by an uncontrolled urge to move the legs. You constantly want to move your legs and it's not letting you sleep. It's associated with an impaired sleep and characterized by throbbing, by pulling, creeping, or other unpleasant sensation in your legs. Symptoms usually begin in the evening or at bedtime, preventing the, preventing the sufferer from falling asleep. There are many sleepless nights that I have heard about because they're feeling, they have a feel like there are spiders crawling up and down their leg. So the main symptoms you're looking at Unpleasant sensations of legs described as creeping, crawling, burning, or tingling sensations. Usually get, it usually gets worse when the person is laying down or sitting, and particularly at bedtime. So, it can, so other symptoms that can prevent the, it can prevent or interrupt sleep, leading to insomnia. Usually improve when standing up or moves his or her legs. Uh, there's a there's a question. Yes. How come it only happens at night? Good question. The reason why it only happens at night is because during the daytime, if you think about this, think about this in a logical fashion. Okay, when we're in the day, we're we're walking around doing our daily tasks. The motor part of the brain, the task part of our brain, is on on. Okay, so. The body has a priority system of what it wants to feel and what it does not want to feel. So at nighttime, when you're trying to retire at night, the brain wants to shut off. However, that's when that one component of the leg, again, the sensory motor dysfunction, that little part of your legs, then that, that turns on. It's kind of like having a dimmer switch in your brain with movement. Normally, if you don't have this condition, when you go to sleep, what happens? You just fall asleep. It's kind of like shutting down your computer. Okay, you shut down your computer, everything shuts down. But imagine having a dimmer switch, having a dimmer switch on your body, and that means that when you want to shut down your computer, these little icons, one in particular icon, is just on and on and on. And then what you do, it's not going to shut down. That's that's why it happens at night because when your body wants to rest the nerves start tingling in your legs, okay? That's why when people do have restless leg syndrome, what do they want to do? It, the symptoms actually decrease when you actually, when you start moving around, okay? Does that answer your question? Okay, good, thank you. Good question. Okay, so most people with restless leg syndrome also have a condition called periodic limb disorder, which causes their arms and legs to involuntarily twitch or kick during sleep. 
Now, if you ever watch a dog or a cat sleeping, and I just, like, last night I was, I was sleeping and I was awoken by my dog, you know, to bark at me. We all see this. We all see this. And I sleep, I sleep, I have a chihuahua, and the dog sleeps right between my legs. And in the middle of the night, probably about 2 o'clock, my dog started twitching and I started barking. And, you know, we all see this when we have the dog, with the dogs, so it looks like they're having a nightmare. Okay? Now, that's with the animals. Some people have that. That's called periodic limb disorder. You will see sometimes, or you may have experienced on your own, that you're, you're twitching. If you see somebody sleeping, they're twitching. Okay? So that's what periodic limb disorder is. Some causes. Here's the thing. What's unique about Russell's leg syndrome, there is no cause. There's many theories, and I'm going to go over a couple theories with you, but there is no biological or cause that you could find on a lab result, on an MRI, on a CT scan. Some researchers believe it may involve an imbalance of brain chemicals. Now, the brain chemical that we all know and love, it helps calm us down, it's called dopamine. Dopamine is a phenomenal, it's a brain chemical called, neuro, it's a neurotransmitter. And what dopamine does, it's released in the frontal brain, and it helps calm us down. While we have pleasure, it calms us down. We like it. Also, too, it excites us. That's one of the addiction uh, neurochemicals. However, in movement disorders, what happens with dopamine, dopamine helps facilitate uniform control of movements. So what that means is that if you have adequate amounts of dopamine, you can actually turn on or shut down your body. And so in theory, they think that there's a dis dysregulation of the dopamine in the brain, and that's why they get a restless leg. So is it even real? That's a common question. Is it even real? Yes. Why will my legs stop moving, twitching, creeping, crawling, tingling? There is, I feel like there's spiders crawling up and down my legs. Is it real? Yes, it is real. So don't think you're insane. It is real. Now, the history of Russell's leg syndrome goes, it's a phenomenon that was described as early as the 19th, 17th century by Mr. Thomas Willis. Closely observed in 1945 by Carl Axe Ekbom, who coined the term, who coined the term restless legs, formerly, because he discovered it, formerly called Ekbom syndrome. And diagnostic criteria outlined by the International Restless Leg Study Group in 1995, it was re re revised in 2003. So, who, who's affected by it? Roughly 10% prevalence in the general population of the U.S. and the Western Europe. Significantly lower, lower rates in African Americans. Again, we don't know why. Sometimes some, certain conditions affect certain ethnicity groups. Some uh, conditions affect people closer to the equator. So it doesn't it really, there's no telltale group, okay? So there's a higher incidence in women. Why? Again, it could be hormonally based. Remember, there's no, there's no cause of Russell's leg syndrome that they could actually put a stamp on in theory, okay? And women are hormonally based more than men, so it could be a higher prevalence of women due to that, that nature, in fact, so. Okay, it's idiopathic. Again, what causes it? We don't know. Theory, the dopamine. Genetic linkage, three separate loci have been identified, none solely responsible. Most research is aimed at here. Most research is aimed at dopamine and or iron pathologies. Who will develop this condition, restless leg syndrome? Again, it's a variety. It's idiopathic. It could be hereditary. Your mom could have it, your dad could have it. Again, another reason why to blame your parents for your dysfunction. Age, more often in the middle age. Pregnancy, stress will cause it. Discontinuing sedatives, particularly benzodiazepines such as Valium. Now, again, the benzodiazepines is a medical drug. It causes a lot of damage. I'm not going to go into that in this lecture. However, if you want to do your research, definitely that's a, that's fun, that's a fun topic to research. Stimulants and caffeine will cause restless leg syndrome. I had a patient of mine. This person was taking up to, I think it was about, about three gallons of coffee a day. And at night, this guy could not stop twitching to save his life. So what I do, I told him to stop off on the caffeine, increase the water intake, and what do you think happened to the restless leg? Other conditions, peripheral neuropathy, iron deficiency, I'll go on that in a minute, liver disorders, and kidney disorders. Okay, so there's two forms of restless leg syndrome. 
One is primary, one is secondary. The primary, that's, the, that's idiopathic. They don't, meaning that they don't know why it's caused. What causes something, I don't know. Idiopathic. This is the one that's early onset. So if you're, if you're under the age of 45 or so, this is, this is the primary, this is called idiopathic. No known cause, usually a genetic component in about 40 to 50% of patients. Again, this is another reason why to blame your mom or your dad. Familial, 60% at least have one primary family member with the restless legs, which basically says that if your mom or your dad or your grandma or your grandpa have it, this is, this is how it can be called, transferred on to you. More gradual progression of symptoms over time. So that basically means that if you're starting to have restless legs or twitching at the age of like 35 or 40, most likely it's going to gradually get worse if you don't do anything about it. Now the other side is that there's a secondary restless leg. This occurs later on. Associated with, other, and this is usually associated with other ailments. Okay, so you have one cause, which the, the restless leg syndrome is a spin-off of that cause. High blood pressure, I'm sorry, high blood sugar related nerve damage. These are the ones who have, are pre-diabetic or diabetes. I had a patient of mine who had restless leg, and what happened is that she she was in good health, relatively good health. Her diet was, you know, was not the best diet in the world. So I had her get her blood sugar checked. There's a lab test called the A1C, and that would, that will predetermine you for a pre. That's like a pre-diabetes check. Okay. Her A1C count was really off the roof. So that's later on it turned out she was a type two diabetic, which through diet modification she was, you know, she was cured. However, that was a causation of her restless leg. So with restless leg syndrome, if you have it and if you think you're relatively good health then may be a predisposition for, for diabetes, typically type two. Okay, end stage kidney disease, diabetes, like I just mentioned, Parkinson's, cardiovascular disease, DVTs, deep, deep venous uh, thrombosis, and or arterial claudication. What are these two? These two are, what's, what they are is, Pain, pain in the calves, okay? Arterial claudication means that you get pain in the calves when you're walking. DVT is a deep venous thrombosis. This is where a blood clot could occur in the lower limb, especially the calf, that could, that could dislodge. So that's another topic altogether. I don't want to get into that right now. Secondary, restless leg syndrome. You have no family history of restless leg syndrome. And again, you have a rapid progression of the symptoms. Remember, Primary, there's no cause. Secondary is symptomatology due to a relative, due to a primary cause. So it's usually related to disorders that result in iron deficiency. Most commonly, underlying, underlying causes of secondary, secondary restless leg. Again, you have a pregnancy, anemia, end stage renal disease, and even ADHD. It's kind of like, hey, look, there's a squirrel. Oh crap, I got restless leg. It's crazy. Yes. Okay, diagnosis and restless leg. The criteria, a sensation of an urge to move the limbs, most commonly the legs, usually associated with paresthesia. Now again, the paresthesia, that's the numbiness. That's a big medical term for numbiness. Onset or worsening of symptoms when at rest, not associated with any specific body position. Now, with restless leg, I had a patient of mine He's really got activated. Him and his wife wanted to retire at night about 10 o'clock to watch the news. My parents did the same thing. And what happened when he retired at night, watched the news with his wife, that's when his one leg started twitching. I have other patients of mine, it only happens when they lay down. So it could be whether you're seated or laying down. Both the cure, what they did is that they, they, they felt the urge to move the legs. So what did they do? They'd walk in circles, oftentimes leading to insomnia. The relief of symptoms with movement, complete relief immediately or short, shortly after initiating the movement. Okay, so marked uh, sarcaridia, variation degree of occurrence of symptoms, worse in the evening, improved in the morning, regardless of quality or quantity of sleep. So this is one of those situations where it happens at night and it lessens in the morning. So how do you treat this? This is the big magical answer, okay? If you have restless leg, now different practitioners, we all have our different, our different treatments. So as a chiropractic neurologist, this is what works for me and this is what works for my patients. 
I've done a lot of research on this topic because I do have a lot of patients who come in with this, but this is what works for me. There's no cure, so the treatment is, is symptomatic only, so my job is to treat the symptoms. So we're looking at pharmacologic versus non-pharmacologic. Non Many treatments out there, but they all lack significant research. Studies are ongoing. So first, first and foremost, before anything, before I recommend, I always recommend change your lifestyle. Because again, if you're, if you're on the standard American diet, if you're pre-diabetic, if you're not doing anything on the weekends, just laying around doing nothing, sure, you may have a chance of getting this. So you want a behavior lifestyle modification. Practice good hygiene, regular moderate exercise, but at the right times. Okay, avoid, this is a tough one, caffeine. Stop the Red Bulls, stop the Mountain Dews, nicotine, put down the cigarette, alcohol, I know this is a tough one, SSRIs, and neuroleptics, okay? That's your prescription medications. This is what works for me. And this works for me and my patients. Supplements. I'm big on supplements. I'm a chiropractic functional neurologist. I've been bodybuilding for 25 years. I used to sell the products back 20 years ago. Actually, it was one of my first jobs out of college. I worked for a supplement distributing company, so I know a lot about supplementation. I believe in it. The brands vary. There's a couple brands that I like that I always recommend to all my patients. But then again, you know, if you're going to do a brand, always do your research on the brand. This is what I always recommend to my patients. This is what, this is what works for me. Again, remember, restless leg, number one theory is that there's some type of abnormality in the absorption and metabolism of iron due to some way or form. If they're anemic, okay, they're not metabolizing their iron, so that's making them anemic. So I put them on an iron supplementation. You're looking at 50 to 65 milligrams three times a day, spaced out. Vitamin C, you want to add on 2,000 milligrams a day. Now, vitamin C is, is a phenomenal vitamin. It's not only good for the restless leg, it's not only good for your immune system, but also, too, it's great for collagen synthesis. Now, collagen in the body, this is what makes, up, this is what makes us up. I always refer to collagen as like the bricks and mortar. And as we age, the reason why we have wrinkles, thinning skin, thinning hair, so forth and so on, is because the collagen synthesis in the body gets depleted with age. So by adding vitamin C into your daily supplement program, it actually manufactures more, more collagen, but also, too, it helps with the treatment of restless leg. Folate, definitely in the form of L-methylfolate. You're looking at 400 to 1,000 micrograms daily. Again, you want to space these out. Magnesium citrate. Now, there's different brands of magnesium, so do your homework. You want magnesium citrate. You want to add 250 to 500 milligrams before bedtime. Magnesium is a smooth muscle relaxant, okay? It will help relax the nerves, it will help relax the muscles. So you want to take it definitely before bed. Calcium citrate, again, there's different brands of calcium out there. You want the calcium citrate, and number one, uh, just to note, you want to take the calcium and magnesium at different times of the day. So that means if you're gonna take the, the magnesium at, mid at nighttime before bed, preferably 30 minutes, you want to take the calcium citrate either in your breakfast or your afternoon meal. Green tea, I'm sorry, green coffee extract, what this does is balance out glucose levels if you're pre-diabetic. Green coffee extract is a phenomenal product to use because it helps balance out the sugar. Like especially if you're going down to pre-diabetic and or if you're if you have a family member that is a diabetic. This is I put it, I put my patients on this and it really, really helps. Not only that, it helps them lose weight. Because what happens, the reason why you're gaining weight is because your blood sugar drops. So what do you run for? You run for the ho-hos and ding-dongs. Valerian root. Valerian root is an herb. You want to take up to 800 milligrams before bedtime. Now, valerian root is phenomenal. It is a smooth muscle relaxant, so you want to take 800 milligrams before bedtime because the add too will help relax your muscles. Natural vitamin E, you want to take 100 to 400 IUs of alpha uh, tocopherol and 200 milligrams of gamma tocopherol daily. Again, you want to space it out. Also, D-ribose. What is D-ribose? D-ribose is naturally occurring carbohydrate that may decrease the symptoms of restless leg syndrome as well. And you want to space that out anywhere from 5 to 10 grams daily in divided doses. 
Now, the most common question that I'm going to get, I know I see a hand raised already, is why can't you take all these in the daytime, morning time? Reason being is because the body is a machine. If you take all your supplements at 9 a.m. with your breakfast, you will pick out what you need, and then you'll crash by, I always say by noon. You peak and you crash. What's going to happen in the second half of the day? You're going to be, again, you're going to have brain fog. You're going to be tired. If you have that meal that's too loaded up in carbohydrates, you're going to, have a, you're going to do what I do. You're going to crash by 2 o'clock. So what you want to do, you want to space them out during the day. Yes, I know that's a lot of pills, but hey, you know, if you want to be healthy, you got, you, you, you got to take a lot of pills. The majority of people that I run into, they're, up, they're taking up to 16 prescription medications a day, and they have no problems taking that. When you recommend 16 supplements a day, then they hit the wall. Hey, this is what's, this is what's going to help you. So you want to space it out during the day, okay? Some of the pharmacological uh, medications that are used to treat restless leg syndrome. Now what is, again, you're looking at dopa, um, a dopamine agonist, the, the, the drugs of choice. Okay, because what you're doing, you're dealing with the dopamine, the dopamine symptom, I'm sorry, the, do, uh, the dopamine area in the brain to help calm down the restless leg. Because it directly activates the dopamine receptors in the nervous system. The most common ones, our levodopa, okay, this is great for intermittent uh, restless leg syndrome. Now, L-dopa, L-dopa, if anybody, is anybody, is everybody over the age of 40? All right, good. Do you remember that movie, Awakenings, with Robin Williams, Robin De Niro? Okay, that's based on a true story with Oliver Sacks. Okay, so for the people who saw it, what did they give, what did Robin Williams give Robert De Niro to help him move from the catatonic state to movement. They gave him L-dopa, okay? Because L-dopa serves as a precursor for dopamine in the human body. L-dopa crosses the protective blood-brain barrier, whereas dopa, where dopamine itself cannot. So again, so if you saw the movie, if you didn't see the movie, I highly recommend it. It's about 20 years old. Robin Williams is hilarious in it. So yeah, I recommend you watch it and you'll learn something. Also too, benzodiazepines. What do benzodiazepines do? They enhance the effect of the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA, aminobutyric acid, otherwise known as GABA, giving them a sedative, sleep-inducing, anti-anxiety, anti-convulsive qualities. Now, GABA, what that does, it calms the body. Okay, GABA is a phenomenon. If you're, for those who are into supplements, you'll see GABA on the shelf. That helps calm the body. Do what would I recommend as a natural alternative? Um, that's something that you and I can discuss afterwards. Benzodiazepines are very popular before uh, dopaminergic agonists became first line with good results. Both benzodiazepines and opioids have a low dependence and abuse potential when used for restless leg syndrome. Okay, so this is where I come in. So for the people who don't want to take any type of medication, this is where I come in and this is where I help my patients. So this is, this is something I recommend. Now I gave you a list of supplements to take, that, that definitely helps. There's proof, there's research of study, research studies have shown this is a phenomenal alternative for it. Chiropractic, I'm a chiropractor, that's what I do. I adjust the body. What do I do when I manipulate the spine, balance out the brain, it helps stabilize the nervous system. Also too, acupuncture. Acupuncture is phenomenal. Little needles, no they don't hurt. They're in, certain, in certain, they're in certain certain areas, a quick thrust to help balance out the inner energy called the chi. Massage therapy, massage therapy works phenomenal for restless leg syndrome because what does it do? It helps stabilize the muscular system. Exercise, exercise has a multitude of benefits. It helps reduce symptoms and stabilize blood sugars. Also too, vibration therapy. Now, vibration therapy, you could, go, you could go to Walgreens, you could buy a vibro plate, it's gonna run you probably about $80 or $100. I recommend going to eBay, finding a vibration plate, use it, use it often. Vibration therapy on the bottom of the foot, what does that do? That helps stimulate the nerves, it awakens the nerves. And what happens when you awaken the nerve? You turn the brain on. The brain, the brain and the body actually have a balance 
So it does help. I'm, I have a patient of mine, I, I have a viral plate in my office, and this helps, and he boasts about this all the time when he comes in. Warm baths are always good to relax the muscles. Epsom salt bath, is always I always recommend Epsom salt. Essential oils and stress management. Remember, one of the things, stress does a multitude of harmful effects on the body. One of the things stress does, yes, it causes restless leg syndrome. And also, too, it causes a lot of anxiety and agitation, too. So things to avoid. Things to avoid, things to avoid. I know this is easier said than done. Caffeine. If you're taking a boatload of caffeine, cut it down, cut it out. Reason being, if you, if you stop caffeine today, you're going to have a withdrawal effect. And what's the withdrawal effect, the most common withdrawal effect from caffeine? Headaches. So, if you're gonna take caffeine, I always just recommend if you guys need the morning joe, that's not a problem, but remember one thing, caffeine is a dehydrant. So the rule of thumb is always for one cup of coffee, you want two cups of water. All to do is smoking. Smoking, this is another reason why to stop smoking. Not only in the 21st century, nobody really smokes that much anymore, okay? It's cutting down significantly. Smoking impairs blood flow to the leg muscles. Also too, alcohol. Watch your alcohol consumption. One of the, thing, one of the things that alcohol does, especially beer, it robs your body of B vitamins, okay? Alcohol does that anyways, but predominantly beer. Okay, with the gluten, the hops, the wheat, and the barley in the beer, it robs your body of B vitamins. So, and also the nerves, ner the nervous system loves two things. The nervous system loves B vitamins, actually three things, B vitamins, proteins, and fats. Not Snickers bars fat, but I'm talking about like dietary fats, vitamin E, coconut oil, things like that. That will help replenish the nerve and help bathe the nerve and recuperate the nerve. So alcohol diminishes the, the absorption of B vitamins. So I'm talking about, I'm going to talk about a case study. So I have a male, a 49-year-old male. He complains of restless legs when he's trying to sleep, OK? He feels the urge to move to, to decrease symptoms. Remember, when you have restless leg, what do you want to do? You want to move your body. You have the urge to move. Okay, because movement decreases the symptoms. He has his uncomfortable sensations. He talks about, Doc, I have, it feels like it's creeping, crawling, burning, tingling sensation. I feel like there's spiders in my legs. I don't like that. His social history. Okay, coffee. I ask him how much coffee he drinks. He just says, a lot. I have no idea. I ask him how much water he drinks. He pulled out a little water bottle, he goes, ah, I'm, bad. I'm good if I drink this. A lot of coffee, this much water. So he's dehydrated. Smoker, again, he's 40, uh, 47 years old. I'm sorry, he's 49 years old. Sorry about that. He's been smoking since, since, since he was 16. He smokes about a pack a day, at least, he says. His diet, standard American diet. High, high carbohydrates, high fats, very moderate protein. He takes in a lot of soda. Exercise, I ask him if he exercises. He just looks at me with a smirk. Hey, when I have time, I do. Alcohol, he drinks four beers. He, four, he drinks four beers during the weeknight. And the weekends, at least a six pack, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sunday nights. So you can see right here, he's lining himself up for Iron depletion, B vitamin depletion, dopamine depletion. So yeah, he just set himself up right here for, for restless leg. So again, the plan, I got him on, I got him on iron supplementation, vitamin C, folate, magnesium citrate, calcium citrate, green coffee extract, valerian root, natural E, D-ribose. I got him on all that. Actually, he stopped the alcohol, he stopped, he lowered the caffeine, he switched his diet around, so he actually he had a whole bunch of money to, to invest in supplementation. Also, how did I treat him? Chiropractic adjustments regularly, it balance out the nervous system. Massage therapy, one of our massage therapists, they use essential oils. He's, he just said, Doc, 
that's awesome. It helps relax the system. Acupuncture treatments. I did acupuncture treatments on the ports on the points of Coralina's lower spine to increase the, again the, the body, the chi, as well as stress management. He's doing stress management by exercising. If you're stressed out, just waking up half an hour early, taking your dog for a walk. If you don't have a dog, iPod. If you don't have an iPod, listen to the earth sounds. Okay? Earth sounds has a phenomenal common effect on the right brain, which is your emotional center. And also, too, he's a big proponent of warm baths. Now, again, warm baths, this guy's six foot four. So, how did everything work out? Okay, he was good. He has significant decrease in symptoms within the first 30 days. Now, 30 days may seem like a lot, but when the symptoms are decreasing regularly, 30 days it feels like a snap. After 90 days, he still experiences restless leg, but not as much as when he first came in. At first, it kept him up all the time. Now it switches. I mean, he's in a high, he does have a high stress job. He's married, he has two kids. So he is very high stress. Good news is he stopped smoking. He exercises regularly and dropped right now. He dropped 45 pounds and he's still going. So he feels great. All right, so I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Again, my name is uh, Dr. Jawad at Total Health and Wellness Center. Phone number is 630-653-2225. My website is www.totalhealthdepage.com. Thank you very much. Thank you.